Hey everyone, I am the Hook. And I'm the Blade. <laughs> uh, it's so awkward. <laughs> <laughs> and together. Oh yeah, Jesus well, Christ. I, you yeah, know. <laughs> I uh, genuinely forgot that that was the next part. It's been a minute. <laughs> All right, uh, and together we are. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Welcome to the Hookblade podcast, a show about all things Assassin's Creed. I'm your host, Lawson. With me, as always, is my co-host, Tim. And it feels very weird saying all of this again. Because at can you believe it's been 10 years since our last episode? Uh, I can, actually. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, we just finished season five of AC Netflix. Um, <laughs> It's getting better. <laughs> it's picking up. Something finally happened. They just brought Danny Wallace back, so I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> just to be up front at the top, uh, this is just a little, I don't know, it's a cheeky little one-time thing. We're, we just, it's a because we feel like it episode. Um, but we figure with, with the announcements that have been made, we, we kind of, we have an opportunity to really deliver the the hook blade to end all hook blades because we've got like the next five years lined up <laughs> so if we play our cards right we don't have to do another one of these for until like 2026 essentially yeah i mean there's a lot of mileage that we can get out of this one episode here so the standard Pokemon hook blade has two parts Now, I, I think it is important to uh, to reiterate, as has been iterated by many. Uh, and I don't know, it seems like in all the all the swirl of hype for AC Mirage, people have kind of forgotten about this. But uh, Ubisoft is still a terrible place to work. <laughs> <laughs> it still really sucks and blows and has a lot of serious problems. Uh, and their CEO, Eve Guillemo, is a real fuck. Um, like, I just read a thing, like, the other day where uh, he said that the, all those sexual misconduct allegations, he, he chalked it up to, and I quote, generational differences. Oh, man. Isn't that wild? That's not a good look. Who knew that it was just generational differences that made his... Wow. All of his employees, toxic, abusive monsters. Interesting. Well, I, but there's, there's also the read of that where he's saying that like the younger people, I guess, that are maybe. I think that is. Yeah. It's like, yeah. just get over it. <laughs> get over it, kids. You're all too sensitive and weak. Little snowflakes. Now let me grope you. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. So I was reading a, a Twitter thread from at a better Ubisoft. They've been, you know sounding the alarm this whole time uh 25 percent uh of people who signed their open letter as current employees have quit ubisoft to work elsewhere and it seems like to the the story going around with red in particular uh codename red one of their announcements with you know is being is being run by jonathan dumont and He's got such a terrible reputation at this company and in this industry that people straight up don't even want to work on his game, don't want to work for him at all. And I think if you've got an idea as theoretically exciting as next gen Japan Assassin's Creed and people are like, fuck that, I don't want to work for this guy. You've got some serious problems, I think. Yeah, I mean, that's essentially like the biggest that's prime to be the biggest Assassin's Creed game maybe ever. Yeah. Um. And for you to just kind of turn down those opportunities, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like a lot of the people on the on the development team also can get bonuses based off of sales and stuff. Um, yeah. So like to turn down all, all of those opportunities, it's not just a matter of like generational differences. Like there's something going yeah. on there uh, that's pathological. So yeah, I think it just we needed to kind of reiterate that. Um, Hashtag hold Ubisoft accountable still technically exists, even if people aren't really using it anymore. And they're still a company that is not a very good place to work and doesn't deserve our financial support at all. So that is still the reality. Um, but all that aside, 
Tim, let me ask you a question. Okay. How are how how excited are you for the future of Assassin's Creed? Like on a scale from one to ten? Sure. Probably like a minus two. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I mean, I won't lie. The, the Mirage trailer was very nostalgic, but also in, in, it felt very like uh, it felt nostalgic, of course, because a lot of there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of iconography in there and whatnot. Um, but also, it just feels like oh yeah, a new Assassin's Creed story. Awesome! Like it took me back to like watching the Unity trailers. Yeah. Um, so the trailer was very well done. I like the trailer a lot. Um, I think it's like the second best one, only being beat out by Revelations trailer. But uh, as far as the game itself, I mean, I, I guess I'm focusing on Mirage only in that in that answer. Uh, generally speaking, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't. Who gives a fuck about Red? <laughs> I mean, it, it's an RPG. Like, I mean, they're they're being very transparent about it. So no, thank you, um, <laughs> Hexy. <laughs> No one, no one knows enough about it. I feel like to really be excited. Mirage is the only one I can understand excitement about at this point. And it really, too, it um, it's kind of astounding to me to think when you consider how excited we were for Valhalla when that was announced, and you compare that to Mirage has just been announced, and it literally is the complete execution of most of the things that we have been asking for and wanting for years, but our faith in the company, their ability to actually deliver on that promise, the the ability for this game to actually be good has decreased so substantially that it, it's honestly hard for me to even be excited for it. Cause I'm kind of just like, ah, well, if I guess if it's everything they say it's going to be, then cool and good. But uh, if, if not, it'll be this, you know, It'll be as good old Assassin's Creed as usual, right? Yeah, I, I I agree. Chronologically speaking, the next thing coming up is interesting uh, because it's technically not Mirage, but uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the last chapter. You see that? Yeah, I saw the little like uh, I saw the little thing showing Animus anomalies, but I feel like yeah. I feel like in that thing they showed it. They showed it as um. Oh no. This is bad. I'm blanking on her name. Avor? The main key, the no. <laughs> um Oh, damn. <laughs> the modern day lady in origins. Layla. Layla. I feel like in a snippet of that gameplay they showed Layla in the Animus Anomaly, not Bassum. So that's maybe I I could be totally wrong. It could be footage oh, from interesting. the could be footage from the normal game. I don't know. Anyway, because we heard Basim's voice in that little teaser, didn't we? Yeah, I I think you're right about that. I mean, more animus anomalies. That's a, like the best part about Valhalla. So I'm I'm yeah. open to that. I guess it's and it's and it's for free. That's pretty cool. It's coming out for free. Well, and what's interesting to me about it is, I mean, one, it's like pretty rare for any Assassin's Creed DLC of any kind to like involve the modern day story and. This is now of particular interest just due to the fact that this might be it. <laughs> this might be the last real modern day thing we get, right? Because, I mean, word on the street now is Mirage has almost no modern day component. I think they've said you have a cutscene of him getting into the Animus at the start of the game and a cutscene getting out of the Animus at the end of the game. And really, how substantial can that be? Yeah, I mean, it's not a matter of like Syndicate's situation where there are cutscenes throughout the game. Um, yeah. If these are just like a, prelim- a, a preliminary modern day cutscene. And then just to give context to, oh, yeah, you're still using an Animus, you know, whatever. <laughs> but I I feel like it, 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 it's weird because obviously I don't think that an Assassin's Creed game should have no modern day. Like Unity's modern day is abysmal and it's it's not really justified. But it is interesting to think that like Assassin's Creed, like like the Animus is not only, it, it, it is a kind of a MacGuffin because it allows you to like go to any time period you want. And that's always going to be motivated in somewhat by like 
how marketable is this is this is this uh, location going to be or whatever? Sure. And it's not like in the lore, the assassins and Templars only exist within the Animus or anything. Like, you know, if you were a random person in in the year two thousand, you could come across an assassin. You don't need an Animus to experience that process. So, it, I I don't think it's like lore breaking or or anything like that to like show an Assassin's Creed story without the use of an animus. It's just the breaking of a tradition. And I, and obviously like I understand why people are upset about it and I'd prefer there to be modern day. Um, yeah. Especially in the back to basics game, you know, that's, but, that's really what did it for me is this like, they're, they're putting all of this effort to say that this is the, you know, classic, it's a celebration of our roots, Assassin's Creed game. And like, what better way to really emphasize that, like to really cater to that player base than to have a real deal modern day story. So it's like confusing that of all the games to, to directly minimize it and even say up front that they're minimizing it. Like, this is a surprise to me. And it makes me like, you know, if it's not going to be this game that has good modern day, then what faith can you really have for any subsequent, you know, infinity game to yeah. have good modern day? I mean, Darby McDevitt, who's writing uh, on codename Hexy, Hexa, Hexa, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it. He says that, you know, he, he never wants people to be doom and gloom about modern day. He's always like, guys, we're trying. <laughs> we're trying our best. Yeah. And. I still cannot really be like I, I'm. I'm just. I doubt. I, I press X to doubt. It, it it it's it's difficult. I don't envy the position that the people behind Mirage are in because it's like, let's say you do a modern day story for Mirage. Um, I feel like because Codename Red and Hexy are going to be so vastly different. Um, at least that's what they're promising. That a modern day story in Mirage would need to have a beginning and middle and a conclusion within Mirage itself, which isn't typical in Assassin's Creed because, you know, Desmond's story spanned across many games. So if you do the modern day story and you have this, like, and you introduce this whole big plan and then you can't execute it across the Infinity games like Red or Hexy, then then it, I could see it being better off just not to bother with it. You know what I mean? Sure. I don't agree with it, but... Yeah, no, and there's always the implication, it seems, that, you know, it can really just come down to time, cost, budget, reasons, you know, on a smaller game like this that you just don't have the resources to pull off a playable, interactable modern day. Right. Or even, I mean, I imagine the cutscenes in Syndicate, I mean, they, they were contracted to an outside vendor, I think, which is why the art style was so different, and I'm sure they weren't cheap to do. Yeah. But it's still just like, it's never that... You can it's you can tell a good story in any number of ways with this franchise and with this concept. So neglecting to do that always is going to feel like laziness more than anything to me. If a game like Brotherhood had no modern day at all, then like that would be pretty insulting. Um, but, <laughs> I f- but I feel like at this state, if I was going to play Mirage, I would count my blessings, I guess. And I would say... <laughs> Well, okay, it's an Assassin's Creed game in every other aspect, so I'll take no modern day. You know, like sure, I love the modern day. I would, I would play a, a modern day only game. I would watch a modern day only thing because I'm invested yeah. in the lore and the franchise. But if I had to pick between like, huh, interactive modern day or you know, decent Assassin's Creed fantasy, I'd pick the latter, ultimately. At this state, that with, 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 with where the franchise is. So I'm not as, if I was going to play Mirage, I would not, that wouldn't count me out because there's no MD. Um, same thing goes for Red and, and Hexy if those end up being Assassin's Creed um, light experiences, you know, like no modern day is, it's not going to, it's not going to make me never play a, a part of the, or an, an, an entry in the franchise again, you know? You're you're saying it's not like the deal breaker to you that it seems to be for some people. Yeah, and, but I would argue it isn't to them either. I and all of those mm. people are going to play Mirage and they're going <laughs> to they're going to enjoy it. They're not going to miss the yeah. modern day at a certain point, you know. 
I th- I think you might be right <laughs> about that. I mean, let me um, consider it. Like so, like think about. Like the modern day, even at its best, was like 20%, 30% of the experience, you know? I'm no, I am not anti-modern day at all. I don't think it's boring. I like being pulled out of the animus, whatever, you know? So you, so yeah. I don't hate it. I like it when it's around. But I, I do feel like it's always been supplemental to the historical stuff. And, and mm-hmm. until, and I mean, obviously, I think everyone would agree on that. But you have to consider how small of a part of the experience it is. So I can't. I can't just like hate on Ubisoft for not prioritizing that. It's a, you know, it's like ma- allow me to live the assassin fantasy in the way that like the old games provoked um, first, and then we could talk about modern day. I guess I don't know. <laughs> no, that makes perfect sense, and that's probably a good segue into let's just talk about Mirage and talk about what we're supposedly getting. Um, how would you rate your excitement out of ten? For Mirage, it, it it it's difficult because I I have I have pretty much decided I'm not going to play it, um, <laughs> and that's nothing Fair. that's nothing to do with like I think it's promising. Uh-huh. And there's there's obviously the like skepticism I have because I don't want to uh, get excited for it and play it and be disappointed. Uh huh. But also I don't know I just feel like they had their chance to keep me on as a fan and I'm. It's just not I, like they missed the. Obviously, they're not they're not upset that I'm no longer a fan. I guess, but you know what I mean. Like the opportunity was missed and whatever. Um, so I like what I've seen. I like the trailer. Obviously, as I said before, I like the screenshots, the concept art, the iconography that they're like they're embracing it so hard. I saw a tweet. Yeah. Um, that was like how it started, and it was Altair, and uh, and then it was like how how it's going, and then it's Bassem with the uh, hidden blade and everything. It's like, okay, cool. Awesome. But don't pretend for the past <laughs> five, six, 500 years, you've been pretending <laughs> like assassins don't exist. You know, yeah. stop, stop pretending like, like this is just the newest entry and nothing has changed. You know, <laughs> God forbid yeah. any of your characters wear a hood. This has been happening since syndicate. Like <laughs> you guys are, you're so phony, you know, <laughs> The existence of Mirage exactly confirms that you guys have been neglecting the core fan base for years. It's it's interesting you say that because I had the same response where there's like an alternate universe where if Assassin's Creed hadn't gone in this wildly different direction for the last however many years, that Mirage could feel like the most boring Assassin's Creed game. Totally. Because it would just be baseline I mean, it used to be that there had to be a twist on it. There had to be something new about the setting, about the protagonist, that they had to introduce these gimmicks and they had to do these other things to make these games interesting. But now they've gone so far off the rails that you can essentially make a game that follows roughly the template and style and tone of what the very first game did and have it feel fresh and exciting and new to people. 100%. I'm kind of with you on the... Like my gut feeling right now is I want to say that like I won't play it just for the same reasons you said of like, you know, I've I've already this far disengaged from the franchise. I've already like lost all. And and as we as we're going to get into, we know that this is not promising what's to come in the future. It's not like best case scenario is Mirage rocks our fucking socks off and we love it. And then we just have to sit with the knowledge that it's the last of its kind and that nothing on the horizon for the next five years is going to deliver more of that experience. That's already frustrating. Yeah, 100 percent. But I also just know I have this like toxic trait or pattern of like being so fucked off with Assassin's Creed and then. Like it leads right up to the the day the game comes out, and then I see people tweeting about playing it, and I just buy it and I play it. I don't know. I'm probably gonna play Mirage. I just don't. I don't trust myself not to. But I, I if I had to say like ranking my excitement out of ten, it's probably at like a four, just because yeah, I am intrigued by what they're promising, but like it is really disconcerting that. For a game that now is tentatively just they they couldn't give us a date. They just said 2023, not even a quarter, mind you, not even like a summer 2023, fall 2023. That's how vague they're being. 
And they're opening pre-orders, which fuck you, opening pre-orders without a release date. But no gameplay, question mark. I thought for sure we'd see some gameplay of this thing at this event. At least a little demo or tease of some kind. But it's got to be in pretty rough shape for them to to be handling it this way. I was almost certain that like when I went on YouTube to find the the trailers and stuff that I was going to see a demo. I I was so surprised that there wasn't one. I mean, and for a game that's coming out next year, you know, I feel like that's very surprising. Yeah. I get not seeing gameplay for for Red or Hexy. I'd rather those games not have been announced, but I, I get why they did it. Um, but yeah, it's like all all we've gotten that's more than the confirmation of Red and Hexy is that there's a, there's a cinematic trailer attached and like some screenshots. That's it. Like, so we essentially know... About just as much. Like, obviously, there's a lot more story details that we know and a, and a lot more uh, developmental details that we know about Mirage. But, like, it still feels like for a game that's coming out next year, we know very little about it. Yeah. Especially compared to other Assassin's Creed uh, marketing cycles. I mean, by this point, the AC Unity story trailer was already released. So it's really weird. Yeah. No, that's a very good point. And it's, 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 a, it's a bizarre way that they're handling this this game. It is also going to be, it's a lower price. It's like $50 instead of $60, which honestly surprised me. I would never have expected them to take anything less than the most amount of money they could get for something. But I do think that signals it's going to be a much shorter and smaller game, which obviously we're okay with. I do just wonder, though, if you really compare it directly to, like, all right, something like Unity, you know. I feel like in this framework, the engine that they're they're running with, it's not like we're going back to you have 13 memory sequences, right? Like that's not the vibe. Yeah. So my question is like, you know, compared to say Rogue, Rogue was cheaper and smaller of a game, but it still felt very much like a full fledged experience. It still was a satisfying game to to play through and 100 percent complete. And I'm, I'm curious if, if Mirage will be or if it'll actually just due to development time and scope feels so light on the bones that it actually underwhelms even compared to the games of the past. That feels possible to me. Yeah, I mean, I really think that what what kind of happens to everyone, you've made this observation, is like within the first like month or so, everyone's going to love Mirage. Yeah. And then maybe a yeah. year later, once we've had time to sit with it, we'll start realizing like, you know, Mirage actually, like the parkour kind of sucks. Uh I, I heard something that like they're using Unity's movement system. Is is there any basis on that? Or no. It, okay. They're not using Unity's movement system. And and, and for good reason, because Unity's movement system, I, I've I've heard about this from from folks who have more knowledge than I do about the game development process. Unity's movement system being what it was, even as broken as it was, is still a miracle, just based on the complexity of what they were trying to do. Um I think the most they've said about parkour for Mirage is that they are inspired by Unity's parkour and that <laughs> Basim will have a new move set with new animations that is much faster than the parkour experience was in Origins Odyssey Valhalla. And I suppose that's encouraging, but I just still am trying to picture how fun a parkour system can be that's just, you know, let's say origins with prettier animations and 30 percent faster and will it be more fun to use than it was in that game sure but like will will we get a parkour system that is so inherently gratifying to use that you can actually sink time into just running around with no direction the way i can in unity or even syndicate to a lesser extent i doubt it is the thing i don't think they can do that this well in with this game you know yeah i i agree um it's it's also difficult because it would be easier to perhaps accept that like oh wow you know this is this is a ubisoft's like you know last hurrah until they go away from the from the roots of the series forever but it it started as like a dlc you know like this wasn't planned from the beginning i will say the first glimmer of not being like i i didn't understand this until i read it in an interview with the creative director on this game i think but 
the whole narrative that it was a DLC that was graduated into a full release game apparently is a little overblown. Okay. Because the idea is they were like they had pitched it as a DLC, but they were literally like two weeks into the process of of envisioning that DLC when it was decided that it should be elevated to a full game. Gotcha. So it's not like they got anywhere in developing the actual game as a DLC. It was it, it was built from the ground up as a new game, which is good. Yeah, I think. But but that is a, a bit like, you know, started as a DLC in quotation marks would still be true and accurate enough for someone like Jason Schreier to print uh, as, a, as part of the rumor. So and I don't want to, I guess, suggest that like, oh, it started as a DLC, not playing it because my favorite game in the series started as like a handheld experience. So, I mean, that is the thing, too. I, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think you I think you. um touched on exactly why even if you are super excited for for mirage it's difficult to be excited for the future of assassin's creed because mirage comes out and then that's it goodbye you know unless <laughs> unless ubisoft is blown away by the support that mirage sees post launch i don't see them doing any more of these kinds of games especially like when they took the time to address that red is going to be an rpg and that hexy is going to be something that's not mirage either and that's that's kind of a good segue into, um, although there is one thing I wanted to say about Mirage, which is just that I think Mirage is one of the best subtitles in the franchise. I think it just is cool and sounds good. I don't know. I just wanted to throw that out there. It's much better than Syndicate. Syndicate might be one of the worst, but that's a whole other <laughs> discussion. Um, Mirage, yeah. So we've pretty much covered how we're feeling about Mirage. And that that brings us to Infinity and beyond uh, <laughs> Assassin's Creed Infinity. I I, I want to just start by saying I think the one thing we can really say we've learned about Assassin's Creed Infinity, broadly speaking, I, it seems to me like they still have no idea what the fuck it is. <laughs> it, it it really feels like they are the way they're talking about it. There is just no clarity to like what we can actually expect. Like everyone comes away from this whole showcase with a different understanding of what Infinity actually is. And I've even seen articles like talk about Mirage being the first part of it. Like nobody understands what's going on with this. And like, yeah, we got some pieces clarified. So like you and I have always speculated. And and this was something we talked about in our very last episode about Infinity, which was that Surely for anything that's going to be a quote unquote live service, there's going to be a multiplayer component. Um, We didn't know if that would be co-op or competitive. It does seem like now it's confirmed that there will be a standalone competitive component to Infinity, which is has its own code name. That's AC Invictus. And. That that's one thing we learned, we learned that it, you know, exists and that it is still called Infinity, which is. But but they're treating it like like it's a launcher of some sort, like this is just the software that launches these different games and that the actual games themselves, which are being developed simultaneously by Quebec and Montreal, they're not really going to share much of the actual base level gameplay system. And, and I, I'm curious, like. At a certain point, the question has to be asked if the sales pitch to us is that these are going to be very different games from each other, but they're part of the service. If they're going to be that different, what what is the point ultimately of bundling them together at all in any way? Right. Like, what do you gain as a company? What does Ubisoft gain and what do we gain as a player slash customer having red and hexy live on the same platform yeah um i i agree with that um because if they're going to be like completely just different experiences you know yeah i mean what is the utility to not just releasing them as two separate assassin's creed games um which it seems like obviously infinity and hexy are going to be on store shelves right but like yeah are, so is infinity like because because if you recall the way Infinity was always described by, you know, Jason Schreier and other leakers was that it was one game that had multiple settings. Right. Yeah. 
that would be updated continuously or whatever. And now the the line, the 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 pitch is not one game with multiple settings. That would be one thing. It's two games, two developers, but they'll be part of it. They'll be part of Infinity in some way. It's all very it's head scratch inducing. And me. and Mac was saying about how like they want to support these games for longer periods of time. As if Ave, as if as if Valhalla hasn't been supported for years, um, at this point, but like so, Red or Hexy, like by that statement, you know, could have years worth of content being released for it. So maybe that's where Infinity comes in. I I don't know. Maybe I don't I don't get it. And I and I do think that the most like logical scenario is whatever the standalone multiplayer thing is it would be what kind of unites the experiences because i would imagine you know okay invictus launches let's say alongside or close to red and you have maps and cosmetics for your invictus character that are all pulled straight from red but then hexi comes out and you get maps and cosmetics from that game that are part of invictus but like you know it's like you could do all of that the same way fucking call of duty does it where you don't need to put Black Ops 12 and Warzone on the same launcher. You know what I mean? Like, uh, Yeah, I mean, uh, it's like Warzone is getting its update with the release of the Modern Warfare 2 remake. So it's like, okay, so now Warzone is going to play like Modern Warfare 2. Have fun. And if we, if we literally just take them at their word for what this is going to be, and let's just forget all this infinity nonsense, and when we get down to it, there's two games coming on the horizon where there's red which is feudal japan open world rpg ubisoft quebec jonathan dumont yeah so if that's one of them you know the question is who cares (laughs) feudal japan right has been like an exciting and like often requested setting and one of my you know if it would probably be my top three settings i've always wanted to see I mean, I don't want any game from Jonathan Dumont. I don't want any of this. And I don't like that it's being directly pitched as carrying on the the legacy or what have you of the the Odyssey approach to these games. Yeah, no, thank you. Jeez. That said, uh, the, the, there's the one th- if I'm if I'm going to force myself as a as a podcast host here to be like optimistic or give the benefit of the doubt, which which fundamentally I don't want to do. There is a part of me that says that whatever it gonna whatever it's gonna end up looking like, the idea of just seeing how AC evolves for something that's gonna be next generation only is intriguing to me. Only in the same way that seeing anything that will be fully next gen only is intriguing to me, because there still hasn't been much. You know, there still is not really a game that only exists because it's only possible on right. the PlayStation Five. Going off of that, you know, the thing the thing about that that I guess I I don't share that excitement necessarily just simply because if Mirage and don't, don't get me wrong, not excitement. I, I can't even describe it as excitement. Uh, yeah. Most it's it's curiosity. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, but like if Mirage was like the the promised AC next gen experience that also was so very clearly touching on the uh, basics of this of the series that everyone likes, that'd be awesome. But I can't help. Yeah. I can't help but be like, oh wow, the Odyssey design approach, but next gen. Oh, so now I can fight a hundred different enemies on my screen at once. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's something to be said about like what next gen can do about immersing you into a city and being a blade in the crowd and all that. Mm-hmm. That I'm not sure that like the Odyssey or Va- even Valhalla approach to this series can nail. Um, like like an AC one remake, I feel like why people get excited about that so much is because it can take the most simplistic nature of the series that everyone enjoys, but like bring in those immersive next gen details, like you know whether it's graphical or with audio or with AI. Um, and so the fact that Red is so set on continuing the RPG trend, I don't know. Because Origins, I feel like, could be described as an RPG, and I like Origins, so uh, it's difficult. Um, I don't know 
if it's going to fall more in the Odyssey or more in the Origins boat because they have shown nothing and we know nothing really. Um, I find Hexy to be the more interesting of the two simply because of the team behind it. But I said the same thing about Valhalla. So that's a, a good point. And it's something I actually meant to bring up, which was, you know, for as doom and gloom as you are about RPGs, you did come around quite heavily in favor of origins. It became one of your favorite games in the series. Um, and so I was always curious, like, does that mean that you have a slightly more open mind to what an RPG AC could end up looking like? And the interesting thing about that to me is, is it's just knowing that it's Quebec and what they're describing as an RPG, just being more likely to be the Odyssey approach. I mean, I'm expecting maybe full fledged character customization, dialogue options. I'm expecting a bunch of mythical bullshit in this game and surely that you know is full stop just not what we want not something we're excited for but there is still that that mindset i have where it's like origins does kind of show that like that approach can be satisfying it's just i have never understood why they're so resistant to just letting an rpg like this is something we've still we've still never really seen but like it is possible, theoretically, to make an RPG game like the ones they've been making that has good parkour and good stealth. It is possible. They've just seemingly refused to do it out of lack of interest or care. Like if they're trying to make a combat forward, combat focused experience, then those things are going to fall by the wayside. But it doesn't need to be combat heavy to be an RPG, in my opinion. I'm not saying that to suggest that I think that there's any chance that red is not the absolute personification of everything we hate and that it's just riding a horse around the countryside and fighting monsters. But I still have that like feeling of, well, maybe, you know, stuff like Hexy or stuff that comes later. I mean, that's the level of copium I'm really on is that maybe, maybe Assassin's Creed will be good again in 2029. Yeah. I mean, I'll always defend origins. And I think if there was just a few more factors at play, like like if I wasn't so jaded with the series, like if Origins was the only game that had just come out, I would probably be excited for Red. Yeah. Cookie is like on my lap looking at the microphone. It's like she's about to start talking. <laughs> uh, I wish she would. Kind of hilarious. What do you think about Red? Are you excited for Hexy? What's up, Cookie? Uh, How you feeling? <laughs> I wonder if you can... Oh uh, man, she's very interested in like you know that foam thing I have. Yeah, she she's liking she likes that. <laughs> oh, the 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 like noise absorber yeah. backdrop thing. Yeah. Aw. But yeah, if if Origins had just come out, I'd be excited for Red. Yeah, that's not the case. I also have had years <laughs> of Ubisoft garbage to deal with to like really uh, really d- just erode my love for the franchise. I guess too. I mean, let's let's talk about Hexy then because. It does seem like there's a cohort of people, like a lot of the same people who are excited for Mirage have this. I hope I hope this microphone isn't picking up my stomach gurgling noises because I I don't know what's going on down there. But oh, we're going to find out in editing how obvious it is that I'm hungry. Anyway, um, Hexy, (laughs) I'm so I don't even want to say torn because I think I know exactly how I feel, which is that I don't give a fuck. (laughs) (laughs) And the reason I don't give a fuck is because I don't 16th century Germany witches. God, I sleep. I don't give a fuck about any of that. I this this is probably the like least appealing setting to me, maybe in franchise history. I, I don't know how else to. I know everyone's tripping over their dicks about a darker tone and a little bit more horror kind of direction, perhaps. I, I couldn't give less a fuck about any of that. So the only thing that I have that would make me even remotely curious or interested in Hexy is that Darby McDevitt is involved. But even then, now, that doesn't quite go as far as it used to because I didn't love Valhalla's story. Exactly. So there's that. And then there's just the fact that it's question mark a new thing like it like the whole thing about hexy so far has been that it's a it's a new and unique approach it's not following the lineage of the rpg stuff 
or the classic, you know, action adventure game. And it's like, I, I had hoped that the very first thing we would see on the next generation consoles would be a new and different approach. Like that would be the thing I would want if if everything else about the game gets to change because you have a new engine, new graphics, new animations, new hardware to take advantage of. I would like a new approach, please. Don't just make Odyssey and Feudal Japan and, you know, prettier with next gen graphics and, and have that be the sales pitch, right? So this hexy thing where it's like witches and may, probably magic and I just don't care. And it's like, <sighs> fuck, you know? Yeah. I mean, the Darby thing doesn't go as far as it used to. Yeah. The creative director it, I, is cool. Yeah. That's fine. I still, I still like, I like there is still, I'll, I'll show up for anything Darby is involved with. Cause I do still think he's a good writer. I think that, the things that I didn't like about Valhalla's story were just sort of the natural side effect results of a mandate that he had to deliver a hundred hour game. You know, I think that there was no way to write yourself out of that reality because it really did end up being like a short game that was stretched into a long one with a bunch of filler ass content. Yeah. I mean, if you consider that like, okay, he's adapting the, the Icelandic sagas, but like, Maybe that's only the only reason why that happened was because that's the only form of storytelling that could span across a hundred hour game. You know, maybe that's kind of what put him in that position. Uh, yeah. And then and I'm still I will be curious about what they had to give him or promise him or what it would have taken after years working on the franchise and treating Valhalla as this like love letter you know and, and i don't want to ever describe valhalla as a love letter to the fans but he was clearly trying to do something with tying in all these things from the series past and and bringing a modern day experience back to the forefront after doing that which would feel like a natural stopping point for him and then he leaves and he works at another smaller studio for almost a year what what about hexe would have gotten him a guy who broadly seems to have the same interests and hopes for assassin's creed that the hardcore fans like us do what got him back on board is you know my question ultimately and he seems really excited about this he was obviously really excited about valhalla we know how that turned out but you know it's like it is possible that you know just not having to be under the thumb of serge hascoat um the guy who is broadly responsible for that whole hundred hour directive. I mean, that alone has to account for something. I mean, it's even been said in the past that there were things about black flag that were help were, were would have been better, but were severely limited by that guy's flawed leadership, you know? So I'm rambling, but that's my only, that's my only interest in Hexe is seeing what got Darby McDevitt back on board and what he does with it. Everything else I couldn't give less of a shit. Yeah, the only thing that about that saying that, that I am at all intrigued by is like like you said earlier, the promise of a like a darker tone. Yeah. Cool, I guess. But I'm also just worried that it's not gonna involve assassins because Darby, as much as he is like one of us, you know, he does like to feature stories where the assassin is not the main character. Yeah. Yeah. So that could this could very well be the case where you play as like a, a female during this time who's not in the brotherhood. Um but mm -hmm. maybe you come across some, but I could see this being like from a civilian's point of view, perhaps with someone who is being accused of a, being a witch or what have you. That seems like a perspective that Darby would love to start from. And it's also just knowing that the franchise is now as comfortable as it is with, you know, supernatural and mythical kind of elements. Like there would be something intriguing to me about a witchcraft or witch trials centered game that was like still taking the the broadly realistic historical approach that Assassin's Creed used to be known for where it's, you know, not real because in real life, witchcraft isn't real, <laughs> but I know that it's, no offense, which is listening to the pie, but I, I, I would imagine there's no chance in hell that Ubisoft of today makes a witch trials game that does not feature you casting spells. Yeah. That reality kind of depresses me. 
I, that's kind of a it's kind of a bummer. <laughs> I think I also just think something that we're running into here, and I think that all of us, like in the fans, and generally, uh, in, in general, um, is that we know so much and yet so little. You know, we know about the next three yeah. games in the franchise, and yet we haven't even seen a sliver of gameplay for any of it. You know, all the interviews are vague as hell. <laughs> Darby is being forced to be vague as hell. Mac is being vague as hell about everything. Everyone's being vague, and I get it. But it's like, why do a showcase at all if if you're gonna? It, it's so it's just so strange to me that like you would show the next like this is the future slate of Assassin's Creed, and yet you can't even show gameplay for the for the soonest upcoming game. I don't understand. Yeah. And the AC Netflix thing, it's like. Are you even going to show me like some concept art for it? Anything at all? Okay. Awesome. You're just telling me that it still exists. I appreciate that. It's still super early in development. It could fizzle out so easily. I'm not excited about the showrunner. I feel like I'm at the exact point as an Assassin's Creed fan where I will never play another game, but I could, I, I could watch the show. Like, cause <laughs> really, well, well, here's the thing. Like I watch, <laughs> I, like I watch shows and movies all the time. So even if I wasn't a, a, a acclimated with Assassin's Creed, I, I could check it out, right? And yeah, knowing I what I so. know about Assassin's Creed, it's going to incentivize me a little more to watch it. So I would watch it, but not as like an invested Assassin's Creed fan, but like as an Assassin's Creed veteran, you know? <laughs> like As a survivor. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, that's perfect. I like that more than veteran. Yeah, an Assassin's, <laughs> an Assassin's Creed survivor, you know? Uh, yeah, I I mean, I'll watch it just because it's kind of the best chance you have at any sort of modern day content. Because I really can't imagine an Assassin's Creed show, just like I couldn't with the movie, that has no you know modern day element. And the movie had too much modern day. Like, <laughs> I would imagine their instincts will be will be similar in that regard. And and you could just do more with it in a show. Because a show, let's say you you have animus chicanery in the first 10 minutes or the last 10 minutes of an episode and it teases you up for the next one. But the bulk of the story is is a historical narrative. That could be cool and perfect and great. But woof, I don't I would love if they had just said what the like historical setting would be. That would have been pleasant yeah. to know. Oh wait, yeah, Malta. <laughs> <laughs> just to, just to step on the toes of uh, <laughs> the uh, tribute fan game that is currently in the works now um i would love if they i mean the opportunity for a show or movie is that you get to do a setting that wouldn't make great sense as a game like i always thought you know world war ii assassin's creed would be great for show or movie um there's a lot, but there's so much you can do with it, and they'll probably, if I, knowing them, they'll want to tie in like existing characters and time periods and shit. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. <sighs> Codename Jade is looking pretty awesome. Oh yeah, that's the most exciting uh, announcement. <laughs> is I what I what I really wanted was a uh, boy. There's they showed the like teaser. I forget how exactly it played out in the showcase, but. The way it finally was was said that this would be a mobile game had me laughing, LMAOing my ass off because it was just so like, aha, you got excited for a moment there, didn't you? China, look at this. And then Danny Wallace is over there just being like, wow, that looks beautiful. And you're just like, did we just look at the same fucking thing? <laughs> did we, are we watching the same showcase? <laughs> Isn't there like, I was, I mean... The character that they that they show perched up, posted up, about to about to leap of faith, has like an assassin insignia on his on his drip, and I don't think assassins were around yet in that time period. Maybe like, they're like that. It's like this is pre origins timeline we're in here, yeah, well, and this dude's rocking the crest. And thus is the problem because that whole origins <laughs> nonsense with the hidden ones is a retcon of. <laughs> uh, AC2 establishing that the fucking insignia has been around for a long time. They were never, they were never not assassins. Go fuck yourself. And Origins decided to change that. <laughs>
I love when franchises retcon stories to make it more boring and less cool. Yeah, I mean, Jade is a... <laughs> it's intriguing to me because I always wondered why there wasn't like a... Ch- I mean, phones are powerful enough that you could... I mean, you could probably run the fucking Ezio collection on your phone if you wanted to. And I, that no one's done it. No one's put it up. I like mobile gaming. I have a little switch grip style controller for my phone and I play games or or I stream xCloud games to it. So the promise of like play Assassin's Creed on your phone on its own is appealing to me. I have a fucking I have the Galaxy Z Fold 3 and it'll run that shit like a dream. It'll be great. The question is, it's it not only is it set in China, but it's also primarily targeting the Chinese market, which means gotcha type bullshit. Genshin Impact style gameplay where it's probably as as full force RPG and, you know, loot boxy as possible. Uh, and I'm sure with having a character you can customize entirely yourself that it's not going to have the most in-depth story either. So definitely going to be a limit to how interesting it can be. But there is the uh, inherent to me, there is an inherent appeal to. I'm playing Assassin's Creed on my phone. Mm. <laughs> it's on my phone. It's on my telephone, my mobile. Yeah, I mean, it's very Ubisoft because they can capture a whole new audience. I always thought that the whole point, I mean, we've known that there was a mobile game in China in development for like a, a, a long time. And I always, I, I'm sure it's even on record on the podcast at some point of like, make a mobile game, advertise the shit out of it in China. Because they have never released a mainline Assassin's Creed game in China, to my knowledge. So they don't give a fuck about the Assassin's Creed franchise over there. But if you can make a game that hits with them the way that, you know, those uh, those similar games are are successful in that market, then you are able to establish some brand equity in the territory for the possibility that a bigger AAA release, you could ex- exploit that market. I always thought that was the strat. And that it would imply that like one of these Infinity games, I thought for sure Infinity would kick us off in China for that reason. Because then they could sell the game in China and they could sell millions more copies. I guess not. I guess they're just doing this uh, for its own sake. Yeah. I mean, whatever. It kind of seemed know? like that was what was going to happen with all the ex- extended universe stuff that was being set in China. Like there's like a book. Yeah, there's a like book they want to establish a, a reputation there. And it's like. I don't know. There's a book series. There's like comics, I think. I mean, ugh, man. I just, I hate Assassin's Creed. <laughs> I I hate Ubisoft. I don't care. <laughs> it's so hard. I mean, I, it's so hard. I, um, like, I care. If you guys can't tell, this whole this whole podcast episode was my idea. <laughs> like, I care because. I had to bribe Timothy <laughs> with uh, sexual favors to get. They get him to come on. Yeah, I mean, it, it was worth it ultimately, but <laughs> it, it's just I care obviously because I've dedicated a lot of my uh, a lot of my uh, video game life to Assassin's Creed and obviously this podcast, yeah. and so I care. I, but it's it's just the element of like I'm past the point of like I'm not going to let you rope me in again, Assassin's Creed, just so you can hurt me. It's not. I'm, yeah. pa- I'm past that point. It's just. I just, I just can't, I can't even get excitement to begin with because I know what the company still stands for and I yeah. know, I know what they're going to do. I know what they're going to do. I don't care. I don't care that Mirage exists because it doesn't mean anything. All you, all you people that see Hidden Blade and you say thank you, you know, you're part of the problem. You're part of the problem. You see a beaked hood and you see a fingerless bassum parkouring and you accept that you are weak (laughs) and I don't like you (laughs) oh man it's uh it's it's hilarious to me because I if I think about Mirage if I really truly just try to predict what it would be and even the worst case scenario of what Mirage turns out I mean let's talk about the most busted parkour system let's say it's exactly (laughs) like valhalla's parkour let's say it's exactly like valhalla stealth it's in fucking operable i i i have to think that just 
the baseline facts we've been told about this game. Oh, and let's just throw in like buggy is unity. Let's just make it also <laughs> really buggy. With all of that going against it, I just have to feel like the baseline facts we have about the game, the fact that it is an assassin, it's Basim, it's it's shorter, it's no dialogue options, it's an action adventure game, it's black box missions, you know, all of this, all of these things, the 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 aesthetic, the setting. I feel like it would have to just by default be the best Assassin's Creed game since Origins, right? Like there's just no way even that broken that it's still somehow for me less enjoyable than Odyssey, right? Yeah, I agree. I mean just just in that like it's going to be mercifully short too. Like even <laughs> like <laughs> really easy to pick up and play. It'll be over sooner, you know? No, yeah, it, it doesn't overstay its welcome. At least it's not pretending to. And then there's a DLC if you want to play further. Cool, you know. And, and then if they and so if they're telling me, hey, we're going to give you most likely the best Assassin's Creed game in the last five years, I sure would like to be able to say thank you. <laughs> but. The truth is, like you said, you know, it's just that the level of interest has died down and the trust has died down. And it's like, God, I don't know. I mean, it's. Is it possible that we see gameplay of this thing and it just rocks our shit? No. Or, or at least mine. I know you won't <laughs> probably won't care either way. <laughs> and suddenly I'm like, mm, I pre-order. Mm, give it to me. Give me the game, please. Thank you. You know, like, I guess, I guess. I guess it's possible. I see that. I, I see possible. that as a possibility for you, and I don't mean that in like a negative way. I just, <laughs> I, I know your habits with Assassin's Creed enough that <laughs> even if it's like a month after, a couple months after, you'll play Mirage. I'm gonna and play you're gonna Mirage. message me, I and you're gonna know. be like, you know what? There's this really cool sequence, and <laughs> it really felt like PC too. <laughs> cause, cause, cause. Because that's what I did. I did that for Odyssey. I did that for Valhalla. I was so, like, I was in at the beginning. I always start, I start high, and they have to disappoint me so consistently and so much that it brings me down. And Mirage is already starting pretty high as a concept. So I guess, yeah, I'll just, I'll, I'll drop the facade and I'll admit it. I'm kind of looking forward to Mirage. But I still, overall... Like that's the thing. It's Mirage is like it's it's a, it's its own thing. It's for me, it's detached from just like the state of the the franchise because it's true that like if they just announced Mirage and neither of the other games, and let's say hypothetically we didn't have any leaks or rumors about next gen Assassin's Creed, it would be possible to look at Mirage as a course correction and, and as a, as an example of like oh this is what Assassin's Creed could be now and we could just go back to how it was wouldn't that be beautiful we could just have it like it used to be and it would just change you could go to different settings they could do different things yeah fucking throw some naval gameplay onto it you know do your do do your different thing here and there you know different time periods mix it up but it would still be at its core what we always liked um but that's we just know that that's not it's not possible so we're just we're a bunch of fucking clowns really this this whole fan base yeah. i think it, it, Every, we're all fucking clowns and i'm I'm the, I'm I'm the I'm in the circus for sure. I'm driving the clown car. I'm part of the problem. But, but here we. I are. think it's more uh, likely for you to play Mirage than it is Red or Hexy. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think if I'm being honest, I think it's possible I'll play them all, just <laughs> out of curiosity. Yeah. Just out of sure shameless morbid curiosity. I might wait, get it on sale. You know. Well, maybe, but damn, maybe you could purchase the Assassin's Creed Infinity bundle, and it's like fifteen, it's like fifteen dollars a month, and you get all of the games day one. You subscribe. You get all the old AC games too. Christ, yeah, can't imagine anything bleaker than being subscribed to just Ubisoft as a company. <laughs> I just pay them to exist. <laughs> So I guess that about that about covers everything. I think um, so. We didn't we didn't talk much about Invictus. Do you have any thoughts about Invictus? I mean Is that I'm, the kind of thing that would get you torqued. I'm an old Does that get you back on board? I I mean I I I love the PvP uh, multiplayer from Brotherhood and Revelations. Um kind of dropped off with three and four, but Revelations is when it was perfect for me. Love that multiplayer. So 
multiplayer in Assassin's Creed is always welcome to me. I also always thought that like the Warzone trend would be good with Assassin's Creed because that's kind of what the PvP stuff was. It was you and you had a target and there was other assassins around you trying to kill their targets. Like that yeah. that that was that that's in essence kind of what Warzone is today. It's just bigger maps. Sure. So if you put me in like feudal Japan and I gotta go find a target and also they're trying to kill me and also my target or whatever, then yeah, I that's cool. I'm down with that. Um <laughs> I just, that honestly, like, if you could just casually play that instead of being invested in, like, the lore and story, that sounds like the perfect way to enjoy Assassin's Creed these days, <laughs> you know? Parkour around, yeah. stab some multiplayer people, but not have to care about the story and lore that's being ignored every day. <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I, w- I won't play it. But, uh, you know, I'm excited about, I, not excited, but I'm intrigued by the idea of multiplayer coming back. I also think, like, like I've said this before, co-op is is a great idea for Assassin's Creed. Bring it back. Yeah. Co-op in feudal Japan. That sounds like an okay time. It sounds like a pleasant experience. I can't believe that that's like a standalone thing, though. That's kind of strange to me. I I, don't, I mean, I feel like it yeah, it makes sense with the Warzone approach, theoretically. But is it is it going to do the same thing that Call of Duty's doing, where like it uses Red's assets? That's that's what I would imagine. Right. Yeah. I mean, maybe they, that's also where they would introduce like legacy assets. Like here, we we did a Renaissance Italy map and a American Revolution map. I mean, they could kind of do anything if it's if that's the yeah. idea. Yeah. Which right? is what but, they did with in uh, like in Revelations. A lot of the maps were like, oh, here's Rome. Here's mm-hmm. here's uh this this town square in Florence from AC two. Um, yeah. They just never got to the point where it was like hopping generations, of course, but. You are the you're the re- resident uh, PvP expert because I never touched that shit. You were you were missing out, man. Any of it? I know, I know. It's a lot of fun. I guess to to kind of wrap this up, uh, since it's been a minute, and I was gonna maybe do this at the top, but honestly, I forgot. Have you had a good year? Um, kinda, sure. <laughs> if your answer is no, I can cut this part out. But I just you know we haven't we haven't done this in a while and. Uh, it's been a whole, like, over a year since the last time we did an episode. Kind of detoxing from Assassin's Creed was nice. Um, yeah. I, uh, yeah, for the most part, I think I've had a, I, I've, I've had a good year. Um, I'd say my answer is yes. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> I, I, I think I've had a really good year. I, since, since the last episode, I, you know, I graduated college, uh, moved out of my parents' house in Missouri. I moved to Los Angeles. I worked on... A couple TV shows. One of them's airing right now, The Patient. I worked on set for that. That was fun. Now I work on movie trailers and stuff, which has been a cool job to have. So it's been a good year. And I think both of us have been staying busy, which is part of why we haven't really delivered on the idea before of like doing something else that's not Assassin's Creed related, whether it's a podcast or a YouTube thing. But, you know, we appreciate that. It does seem like You know, every once in a while, I'll glance at the analytics and it seems like every once in a while people come back and listen to these old episodes, which uh, is really nice and and always a nice feeling to see a new comment pop up and that people are are still getting something out of these because we did it for a long time and and it was fun. And it's been it's been fun to kind of uh, dust off the old blue Yeti and get back into it today. Yeah, totally. I definitely. uh miss doing the podcast element of it whether it's assassin's creed or whatever so it's definitely nice to revisit this and uh i'm sure that there are a couple listeners that will be uh happy to see this episode and hopefully hopefully they agree with some of our thoughts here uh you know the 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 main the main thesis statement for this episode i think uh if you're excited about the future of assassin's creed that you are wrong and you should feel bad um <laughs> yeah i mean i i endorse that <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> so let us know in the comments uh, i'm looking at you how Dylan. excited are you out of 10 <laughs> has has ubisoft won you back have they wined and dined you with this mirage trailer <laughs> and will you be pre-ordering and buying the special collector's edition with the I don't know. Is there a fucking figurine in it? There, I didn't even look. There is. And apparently everyone has already bought it. And now they're putting it up on eBay. 
Awesome. That's sweet. That's what we like to see. That's what we like to see. Uh, I've been the blade. Hey, I've been the hook. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for listening. Uh, Have a great year, since that's probably how long it'll (laughs) fucking be before we do another one of these. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. An elegant design. An elegant design.